Okay, so um, I had to move it a little bit because of the sun is coming in. So um, what I was going to say was, um, so this movie that I was watching this morning, I got all emotional about that, um, showed me the one part about um, like the aerial view and reminded me of that whole plane crash thing and stuff. And all of the other videos I've seen of people rushing to help others, you know, complete strangers. So, um, the other thing in this movie, it had, well, it had a few different things, but one of the things was, um, it, it's a true story about this, this dig and it's back, um, it was World War II, but I, and while I was watching it, I thought it was World War II. They were saying it was going to be the, this plane, this war was going to be fought in the air. But the people dressed, I thought, kind of like the twenties. So I don't know. I'm, 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 I'm no historian. Besides, history is so fucking fake. So I don't know. But the war was going to be fought in the air, and um, the people, some of the people had cars. Not everybody had cars. It, you know, it's, I thought it was the twenties. So, but anyways, so uh, back then there used to be a lot more um, people who would find, especially these mounds, they'd find these mounds on their property. And when they would go in and they would dig, they would find these archeological archeo digs that they had significant things in these uh, mounds. And um, one of the things that a lot of the mounds were found, I think in North America, were um, giants. So they would do all these digs and they would find um, these giants. And there was a lot of pictures uh, back then where they would take pictures of these men standing next to giant bones, like standing next to a giant skull and stuff like that. So there was all these pictures. And um, then the um, this is where, so uh, the Smithsonian is a government agency. They are here just to... Uh, They'll show us what they want us to see, and they will, um, I mean, they make money off of showing what they want us to see, but they can say whatever they want about it, you know, and if they go in on your property and dig, they can, uh, you know, they, they can take control, and they can take, take it away from you, you know, and it's crazy because out in the sea, if you go out and you found a shipwreck, and you claim it, it's yours. Like, whatever you find there is yours. You can find hidden treasures. Like, you have people who go out and just do that. They just go out looking for sunk and, um, sunken ships and stuff because you get the stuff. But then on the land, they um, made it where, that's how they come up with this, like, they can sell the land to us? In what reality? The one they created. So they could go on and they could take over. And uh, then they would say, well, the museum is taking these artifacts. These are historical artifacts, we have to keep them. Well, if they didn't go with the story that they were wanting to say or how they could ma manipulate or whatever, they would go buried into the depths of the museum. They have secret places in the museum with our real history and stuff, but they hide it. So then they go in and they get all the newspapers that are printed pictures and they try and get rid of them. But still, the stuff is able to come out because there was a family member who had saved this newspaper and his granddaughter ran across it. So the stuff still comes out. They can't repress everything as hard as they've tried. The, the, the stuff keeps coming out. So with the... Um, with the uh, mounds that they found the um, the giants in. So that, when you find out more about the history and stuff like that, is um, they were called the Nephilim, I believe. And they're, um, you know, people call them aliens or whatever. They are from outer space people. They're from other, um, other places. And um, they were a part of our beginning history. And there's an old ancient uh, Indian folklore and stuff like that about how they used to have to fight the giants. And um, the giants would eat them. The giants were cannibals and would eat them. And they would rape their women and stuff like that. And then I've seen where they talk about uh, the DNA 
that of red hair comes from these giants. That's how red hair was introduced into uh, human beings was from these giants, that there wasn't red hair before that. And um, these giants were all giant red haired, just giant men. I don't even know if there was, there would have had to be someone then probably, but in these burials that, um, well, I, yeah, they would be able to tell if it was women, but I think in all the burials, it was been a lot of men. And somebody had even given me a whole book about it. I still haven't read it. The whole book. And there's been other things. Like Mr. Ballin did a story about um, in Afghanistan. Uh, there was a release of this. Uh, the story was this. Um, I can't remember how they spun it. But they, they spun it somehow. But So one group. I don't know what they're called. Like a, a military group. I think they have their own little groups or whatever. I can't think of what they're called. So they um, they are on a mission, right? And they go up in the mountains. They're supposed to be looking for soldiers or something like that. And they, everybody loses contact. They disappear. They can't find them or anything. So they have to send a second group up there to find these guys. So when the, these guys go up and they come around a corner, um, they start getting um, killed. I think it was um, some kind of... Uh, like arrow kind of sword, like something like you would see in a tribe or something, those long kind of things that you would throw and they've got an arrow thing at the end. And um, they were getting hit with those. Pretty sure that was the weapon. And they were falling down. And so then, um, you know, they all went into full, you know, uh, war on this thing. And it ended up, they drug him out and stuff. And it was a giant. And then they were all told they had to sign NDEs and stuff like that. And um, so the story was spun in a different way. So he had met a guy who was actually there. And so he was telling the story that the guy had told him. And that it was all true that this giant did come out. And if you watch some of the stuff with the missing 411, that has a lot of stuff where it's like, ah. Oh, I think that, well, I know Bigfoot's real and Giants are real, but I think that they are um, around us a lot more than people have any idea about. I don't think people realize that we are really living amongst other beings <laughs> right now on this planet. And um, so the, uh, but the history is totally manipulated because the museum is a part of the the um the confusion is part of the redefining history the way they want it you know of, of, they're the liars and they're part of the whole thing you know i'm sure there's probably the vatican who probably opened the first museum you know hired the first curator and um besides the fact of how many museums made money off of these these fines but um didn't give any money to these people and um in the pressure that i'm sure that people were put under you know i mean you can have recognition or you can have death what's your choice so um yeah it, it's been so much corruption in this these controllers you know we've allowed them to be our government but they are all the same entity that is trying to take us over right now. So, but there's a couple more things I want to talk about. And freaking Trixie is having a meltdown. So, uh, hold on. I'll be right back.